Because I think that it's extremely important because the whole reason why, well not the whole reason, most, most of the reason why God has authority over us is because he made us. And, and he made everything that we see, he made this entire realm, and he made you and I, and he made everybody else that is walking upon the earth. And everything, all the birds, all the cattle, everything that we see belongs to the Lord. And, the, and that's one of the reasons why we should have to hear what he has to say in his word. It's one of the reasons why we ought to follow what God says. It's because he made the place and he made you. So if, if the place that we live on doesn't look like how God said it does, then that makes God a liar. And I'm here to tell you today that God is not a liar. And every word of God is true from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation. And we're going to look at that today because there's something out there that's called scientism. And scientism is, is everywhere. It's everywhere and it's in your schools and it's in your minds and it's in your kids' minds and it's being planted in them right now. They talk about evolution in schools like it's the truth. They teach it like it's the truth. They say, yeah, remember back, back when we were cavemen, back when we were monkeys, yeah, you evolved, you got this then, like it's the truth. And some of us believe it. We believe that we came from monkeys. Some people believe it. They, they believe that the same man that's telling you that you came from monkeys is telling you how the whole universe looks, and you believe him. Well, I'm here to challenge you today. I want you to go to the Bible and see what God says this place looks like. And what better place to go than Genesis chapter 1. You see, we read this verse, we read this chapter all the time, we see it, but we've been looking past it because it has some depth to it. You see, man says one thing, but God says another. But before we go there, let's look at Romans chapter 1. Because this is, this, is, this is important here. Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 18. I'll read this. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. What does that mean? They have the truth in their hands, but they're keeping it from you because they don't want you to know it. They hold the truth. Isn't that what that means? Hold it. They have it in their grasp. They are holding the truth. And how are they holding it? In unrighteousness. It means they're unrighteously holding the truth from the people. And there's nothing new under the sun. They were doing it then. They're doing it now. Come on, preacher. In verse 19, it says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. It's in you. How? For God has shown it unto them. He showed it to you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How did God show it to me? 
What does it say? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and God, so that they are without excuse. So God showed it to you through his creation. You can see the mighty power of God through what he made. You don't have any excuse not to believe God, even if you haven't read the Bible, because you can see what he made and you can know that somebody had to make that. Oh, boy, somebody had to make that. That's a beautiful thing. Somebody had to make that. And it says, because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. All these scientists professing themselves to be wise. The Bible says they became fools. And what did they do? They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And wherefore God also gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's a different subject. We're not going to touch that today. In verse 25 it says, Who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. You know, we used, to, we used to sing a song in school. It goes, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things doesn't belong. I gave you two pictures. One of these things is not like the other. And one of these things doesn't belong. We're going to find out today. Yes. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. How did they do that? They're saying that the creature came about by itself, accidentally out of nothing. Out of nothing came something. Wait a minute, stop right there. Wait a minute, wait. You mean to tell me that nothing became something and then that something became life? Oh, somebody lying. So they exchanged the, the truth of God for a lie and made the creature more than the creator. They said, we don't, God didn't make the earth. Atheists say God didn't make us. He didn't make us. We, we came about out of, out of evolution. We started off as amoebas and then amoebas turned into some little other creeping thing and then it turned into a fish and then the fish said, I'm tired of swimming. I don't want to swim anymore. I want some legs. Let me get some legs and, and jump on land. He said, I don't want to breathe water anymore. I want to breathe some air. So let me let me get rid of my gills and get some lungs. And then, he, then, he, then after he got some lungs, he said, you know what? I'm tired of walking around. I want some wings so I can fly. So then the, the lizard looking thing turned into a bird. <laughs> How foolish does that sound? Oh, but they hold it dear to their hearts. And if you say anything about evolution being false, they look at you like you a dummy. Oh, well, I have all these degrees. You ain't smart. Well, let me tell you something. My God is smart. Well, my God has all knowledge and all power. So let's hear what he has to say about his creation. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Look at verse 20. Paul told Timothy to hold something to his trust. He told him to hold on to something and don't let some other people tell you something else. And what was he telling him to hold on to? Was it picture one or picture two? I don't know. We're going to see. And in verse 20, it says, Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Oh, yeah. And God called him out. He called him out. He said, don't listen to that false science. Don't listen to him. 
read the word. See what the word has to say. Brother Tom, can you give me Genesis chapter 1? See what the word of God has to say. We all know what Genesis chapter 1 says. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God did what? He created the heaven and the earth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the Milky Way galaxy? What, a, what about all these other galaxies? What about the other planets they said are out there that have alien life on them? What did it say God created? Can you read it? was in the earth. God created the heaven and what else? And the earth. Jupiter. Mars. The earth. Uranus. Neptune. The earth. Pluto. The earth. Mercury. The Earth. Are you sure? The Earth. Who did it? God. It came about by itself. Who did it? God created. All right. <laughs> Come on, preacher. All right. When did he do it? In the beginning. In the beginning. So, so was there was there another Earth before then? Was there was there? Some people say this. They say there was another Earth. <laughs> They said there was another earth and then God destroyed that earth and created another one. They get that from the second verse where it says the earth was void and without form. They say there was another earth and then he, he destroyed it. That's why it's void and without form. He created what? The heavens and the earth. The earths? Earth. One. Same. The earth. Okay. In verse two, what does it say? And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And, and see, the thing is, is, is the reason why the first verse of the Bible, it talks about creation and what God did, is because, like I said before, the reason why God has authority is because he made us. He made this place that we live in. So verse 1 says... How says that God created the heaven and the earth, and then verse 2 on tells us how he did it. No other places were made. No planets. You can't, I'll give you some homework. Go and find somewhere in the Bible where it says that God made other planets. Go find them and come back to me. And I'll say, I'm sorry, I've been wrong. And all this research I've been doing since 2015, I'm wrong. I'll apologize to you. But you ain't gonna find it. It ain't nowhere in the Bible. It don't talk about Jupiter. It don't talk about no other planets in the Bible. Go find it. No planets, no prior Earths, no, no, nothing else that was destroyed. This is why God has authority, because he created this realm, this declarative statement that God created everything is appropriately placed as the first words in the Bible. The person that made this place probably has some important things to say. Maybe we ought to listen to the creator of the universe. So after he tells us what he did, then he proceeds to tell us how he did it. So, so in verse 2, it says God moved upon the face of the waters. So what do we have so far? We have God is in existence. He says, I am. Before Abraham was, he didn't say I was. He said, I am. Because he was forever. There was no beginning and there is no end. He is I am. So I am moved upon the face of the waters. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So all that we have so far is God and water. All right. And that's it. That's it. So, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that there was a big bang and I thought there was, there was a bunch of space dust that, that kind of clamored, clamored together and, <laughs> and made the earth. So there was water and there was God. So let's see what else the Bible has to say about this water. See, uh, turn to uh, Psalms chapter 29 and verse 3. Tom, can you give me that? Keep, keep your finger in Genesis. We, 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 we're focused on Genesis, but let's look at Psalms chapter 29 and verse 3.
And another brother, if you would, um, go ahead and, and get me Psalms chapter 104 and verse 2. But let's start off with Psalms chapter 29 and verse 3. What does it say? The voice of the Lord is upon the water. The voice of the Lord is where? Upon the water. It's upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. Wait a minute. Where is God? Upon the water. He's upon where? The waters. He's in another realm, in another dimension somewhere. Where is God? Upon the waters. And his voice is where? Upon many waters. So, so in Psalms, it tells us once again that there's water where God is. Doesn't that make sense now? See, in the, in the beginning it says God's he, his spirit moved upon the waters. Well, what is God's where is God's address? And David said that he is upon what does it say? The water. In verse 10, what does it say? 29 and verse 10. The Lord sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. He sits upon what? The flood. The flood is what? Water. 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 Did somebody get Psalms chapter 104 and verse 2? Who covereth thyself with light as with a, a garment who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. And verse 3, what does it say? Who lays the beams of his chambers in the waters. He lays his, the beams of his chambers where? In the waters. Who is, who is he talking about? What does verse 1 say? Bless the Lord, oh, oh my soul. We're talking about God. We're talking about the Lord. And where is the Lord's chamber? In the waters. In the waters. That's why there's water at the beginning. At the beginning, God's spirit moved upon the waters. That's because that's where he is. He's sitting on water. That's what the Bible says. That's where he is. Let's analyze this further. Go back to Genesis chapter 1. We'll start at verse, we'll starting at verse 3. You got your finger there, Tom? Go ahead. Verse 3. What does it say? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's, there's light. Where, where's the sun? God said, let there be light. Wait, wait where, where's the sun? Did he make the sun yet? No. And God said, let there be what? Light. Wait a minute, there's no sun. How is that possible? You must don't know who God is. <laughs> <laughs> read, read. And God saw the light, that it was good. Uh -huh. God divided the light from dark. So God divided the light from the darkness. He made day on one side and, and night on the other side. And what did he call the light? Darkness. He called the light day. He right? called the light day. And he called the darkness what? Night. night. And what? And, and the, the evening. And the, and the morning. Were how many days? The first day. A million years. Six billion years. The first day. The first day. What does science say? Well, we the, the earth kind of just clamored together over billions of years. And, 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 then it, and then it just started forming itself, forming the land. It was hot in the middle. That's how we have the mantle and, and everything like that. And then somehow water got on it. I don't know. On the first day, God said, let there be light. And the evening and morning were the first day. So we split the light from the darkness. We have Day and night, day and, and without the sun, we have morning and evening with the first day. That's what the Bible says. And verse 6, this is the key here. This is the key here. If you, if, if, if you can't see this, I, I don't know. Because this, verse 6, you can't fit this on what, we, what they say we live on if you try. You really just can't. Read verse 6. What does it say? And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is a firmament? What, what's that? What's a firmament? A divider. A divider. Read verse 8 real quick. And, and God called the firmament what? Heaven. Heaven. The firmament is heaven. The firmament is the space. The firmament is the sky. But read verse 6 again. It says, and God, let there, God said, let there be a what? Firmament. Where? In the midst of the water. What does midst mean? 
In the middle. In the middle. In the center of water. So we already established that God is on water. We already know that. And God's spirit moved upon the waters. And then he said, let there be light. And there was light and he separated the light from the darkness. And then God said, let there be a firmament and expanse in the middle of the water. And what? And, and it said what? And what does it do? And let it divide the waters from the waters. So there's an expanse that divides waters from waters. Hmm. I'm trying to this, this the earth, and then how does that the firmament splits water from water? It, as, what is he? How is that with a globe? How is that? How does that work? How how does he? How did he? Is he talking about? The inside of, is he, is he talking about the, the earth on the outside of the globe? The earth on the outside of the globe, he split it apart, and there's water, there's seas going around the earth. That's what he's talking about. Maybe, maybe that's what he's talking about. Let's, let's see. And, he, and, he, and read on, read on. What does it say? And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament hmm. from the waters which were above the firmament. Okay. And it was so. Okay, so maybe it still makes sense there. So, so we have we have the top of the earth, right? And, and there's there's water up there, and then there's water at the bottom. Maybe that's that's what he's talking about. He has he has water at the top and, and water at the bottom, and he he split it apart. Okay, hmm. that's interesting. Read on, read on. And God said that the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. I'll read. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. Read. And God saw that it was good. Read. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit uh -huh. after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Read. And the earth brought forth grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind. The tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Read. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay, here we go. This is what we need right here, 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament. Wait, stop right there. Wait a minute. I was trying to make it fit the globe. So, so, the, so the firmament split the waters from above the earth, on the top of the earth, and on the bottom of the earth. And, and in the middle is the mantle. That's what they taught us, right? But what did it say? It said, let there be lights where? In the firmament. In? Wait a minute. So there's lights inside the earth? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not how it works. That's not how it is. What are those lights? Read, read. Of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So the lights to divide the day from the night. He said he put them inside the firmament. In, in order to make it fit the globe model, it has to be on the inside of the globe. Because there's a firmament, there's an expanse that's splitting waters from above and below. And he said he put lights inside the firmament. Read. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days, and years. And in verse 15, what does it say? And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So the lights from inside of the globe are giving light on the... No, 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 that's not what it is. That's not what it says. What it is, is the firmament is splitting water above from water below, and the sun and the moon and the stars are inside the firmament. That's what the Bible says. It's inside the firmament. Which one of the models looks like that? Which one of the papers looks like that? Go back to verse 6. And, 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 and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. There's water above and there's water below. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Um, Tom, give me uh, the, the, the Rakia definition in Strong's and the Strong's Dictionary. It's marked in there for you. And everybody turn to uh, 
Job chapter 37 and verse 14. Turn to Job chapter 37 and verse 14. Um, it should be on page. Page 110. There's a paper that says Rakia on it, and that means firmament. And the definition is, is on page 110. It's Hebrews 7549. You guys can look this up yourself. 7549. Turn to Job chapter 37. Job chapter 37, starting at verse 14, it says, Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Here's God talking to Job. He said, Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds? Or dost thou know when God disposed them? In verse 15, and, and caused the light of his cloud to shine. Dost thou know, when the, know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him who is perfect in knowledge? How thy garments are warm. When he quieted the earth by the south wind, hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as molten glass. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Job said the sky. No, no, I'm sorry. Job didn't say that. God said the sky is like molten looking glass. That don't make sense. Yeah. That don't make sense at all. So you're saying God doesn't make sense. Hmm. Oh, he makes sense. See, the firmament is an expanse in between waters. There's waters above and there's waters below. God said the sky is like molten looking glass because that glass like structure is what's holding the waters above. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's there. It's there. Oh yeah, it's there. Let's look at some more. And, and Job chapter 9 and verse 8. Let's turn back. Turn back to Job chapter 9 and verse 8. Remember in, in Genesis chapter 1 it said the firmament is, God called the firmament heaven. So when he's talking about that first heaven, that heaven that's the sky, there's different heavens. There's the heaven that's the sky, and then there's the heaven of heavens that God is in. So in Job chapter 9 and verse 8, it says, Who alone spreadeth out the heavens that treadeth upon the waves of the sea? So God spread out the firmament. He spread it out. Oh, there's more to support this. He spread it out. And, and, and then it says, what does the Bible say about him spreading it about? He spread it about. Look in Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 24. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 24 says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he who formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord who maketh all things, who stretcheth forth the heavens alone. There it is. He's talking about it again. He's stretching forth the heavens alone. He stretched the firmament alone. That's what he's talking about. Then he called the firmament heaven. He stretched it out alone. But how did he do it? How does it look? How does it look? Turn Isaiah chapter, chapter 40. And verse 22. Just turn back a little bit. Turn back a little bit. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 22. And I know a lot of people use this verse to, to say that, that the earth looks like a globe. But it says clearly here that it's God that sits upon the circle. Last time I checked, and a circle is not a ball. A circle is a flat, round object. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 22, it says, It is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. That word is chub in Hebrew. It means round. It means circle. It means compass. Not ball. 
It is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are like grasshoppers, who stretcheth out the heavens. There it is again. He stretched out the firmament like what? Like a curtain. And spreadeth them out like a tent to dwell in. Well, that doesn't really make sense to you at first. You just, you just think he's talking figuratively until you see the model that I put on that paper. Then you see which one looks like he spread out the firmament like a tent to dwell in and put lights inside of it. Oh, yeah, the Bible's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to cut up this scientism today. I'm going to cut it up. Cut it up. Cut it up with that double-edged sword. You see, Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I bring the truth today. He spread them out like a tent to dwell in. So he spread out this sky that's like a molten glass, like a tent to dwell in. God said that. So this tent that we dwell in, that has waters above and waters below. Maybe, maybe this, these waters above and below, they're just, they're just in the old, they're just the things that how it was before the flood. After the flood happened, you know, the world changed. You know, people have these theories in their mind. They just try to make what man said fit. Yes. But you ought to just listen to what God said. And let's look at let's look at the book of Psalms. Let's, uh, read read uh, Rakia. Rakia. What is what is Rakia? Rakia is the Hebrew um, word for firmament. And what is the definition of Rakia? What does it say? A visible ark of the sky. A visible ark. What does it say again? A visible ark of the sky. And Rakia comes from the word Raka, which is right below it. Read Raka. What does Raka say? Rock, I say. It's, it's, I, I circled it. From uh, an expanse, the firmament. Read. Or apparently a visible arc of the sky. Firmament. Right. right. A visible arc of the sky. And, and that word comes from the word raka, which means, which means it's beat like a hammer and spread out like metal. Uh, in a sense, uh, a thin cake. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Rakia is the firmament, the visible arc of the sky. That's what it says. Oh, it's right. That's right. Which one does it fit? Which one does it fit? And there's another reference to the waters above. Let's look at. Psalms chapter 148. Give me Psalms chapter 148, looking at verse 1, and we'll go up to verse 4. Psalms chapter 148. See, the firmament separates the water, but well, does it really separate the water? Is there really waters above? You know, some people say it's clouds or something like when God said he when he separated the waters above from the waters below, they say, well, he's talking about the clouds in the sky. But we know Genesis chapter two, it, it says that there was no rain on the earth. Genesis chapter two and verse five, it says there's no rain on the earth. Um, Brother Butch, can you give me Genesis chapter two and verse five? But right now, Psalms chapter 148, what does it say? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise ye the Lord from Praise the heavens. Him in the heights. He's, he's layered, he's layering it. He said, praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise ye him in the heights. He's, he's given the layers. Go ahead and read, read. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise, praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heaven. Oh, there it is, the heaven of heavens. See, there's two, there's, there's two different heavens. There's the heaven that is the firmament, that's the sky, and then there's the heaven of heavens, that's where God is. Praise ye waters that be above the heavens. Wait a minute, wait, read it again. Praise ye waters that be above the heavens. Where are the waters? Above the heavens. Above the heaven, the sky, there's what above it? Water. Somebody lying. I ain't never hear nothing about no waters above. I mean, I look at the sky and it's blue every day, but 
I mean, I never thought that that blueness was water. That doesn't make any sense. That's not what we were taught. Man told us that, that, that we live on a, on a spinning ball, you know, that's rotating around the sun and, and, and there's no boundary. How do they go into space if there's a firmament? How, how, are they, how are they going to the moon? How are they sending all these? They lying. That's all. They lying. But you believe, we, we believe them, though. We believe them. They told us we come from monkeys, but they, they only lied about that. They ain't lied about nothing else. They tell us that we came from monkeys like it's the truth. They, 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 they lied about that. I don't believe I came from a monkey, but I believe everything else that they say. They lying. Somebody lying. Somebody's lying. So David said that there's waters above the heavens. And God sits upon waters. God sits upon the flood. He puts his chamber on the flood. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God is upon many waters. So those waters above, that's where God's sitting, on top of those waters that are above. Doesn't it make sense now? It all makes sense. See, the firmament separates the waters below from the waters above, and it says God is sitting on waters. We always talk about heaven above. We look up heaven. It's up there, heaven, and then God is on top of the waters. That's what the Bible says. That's what it said. Do you believe? Are you still going to hold what man said? Man didn't tell me that. I, I just, I just can't, I just can't let it go, man. Man has been feeding me this all my life, ever, ever since kindergarten. They put this in front of my face and said, "This is where you live." But God says the other place is where you live. What does Genesis chapter two and verse five say? And every plant of the field. Before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had, had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was and there was no man to till the ground. So God didn't cause it to rain upon the earth. There was no rain. So how are you going to say that those were clouds? Where did the rain come from? Oh, I'm going to tell you where the rain came from. When, when, Noah, when Noah got on the ark, God said he opened the windows of heaven. Oh, it makes sense now, don't it? It makes sense now, don't it? There was literal windows that he opened and the water from above dropped down. Oh, read it. Read it. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 11. What does it say? Oh, what does it say? In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all fountains of the great deep. The fountains of the great deep. You can look up great deep and see how many times it's mentioned in the Bible. The great deep is the waters below. below. What else? What else did? And the windows of heaven were open. The windows of heaven were open. He opened the windows of heaven and he broke the fountains of the deep. And then what happened?